split jump. I say motion analysis for backbend and split jump. I say you last term. Motion analysis is the use of advanced technology to analyze specific movements to improve them, such as for athletic performance or to prevent injuries. I used OnForm, which helped me calculate angles and use body tracking. The movements I focus on are backbend and split jump. They're both done in gymnastics, dance, yoga, and ice skating. Backbend is done only on floor using the abs, obliques, and legs. Split jump is a plyometric exercise on both floor and beam, which uses your glutes, calves, and quads. The coaches I worked with are Abigail Sandorf and Sophia Allen. Abigail works with competing athletes in gymnastics, and she coaches levels bronze through gold on the beam. She Beam is gen- exercises are generally harder just because you have a smaller surface to work on. Sophia works with younger athletes on more rudimentary skill to get them ready to compete, such as skills like cartwheels, handstands, rolls, or bridges, which is the end of a backbend, but she does eventually work on backbend with her athletes. Some goals for them, I want them to efficiently and safely be able to pull off their movements at a competing level. And for split jump, same as that, but there are some nuances here because you need to be able to achieve a certain angle between your hips and your feet. For example, Olympic, you want to have a 180 degrees, which is a completely straight line. Some general tips that are going to help you and are very important to remember. You want to perform underneath a padded surface, which is going to help keep you from getting injured because you could get injured just from falling. Or over time, landing on a harder surface is going to build up that chronic injury. Do not perform without a spotter because when you're learning, it's very easy to make a mistake and injure yourself. So you want to have someone there to protect you. On a specific bad example, I had Abby spot Sophia so that way she wouldn't get injured. You want to always warm up so that way the muscles you're going to be using are ready to be used. Full body strength training is important, so that way there's no imbalance, which can prevent injury. It's very easy to hurt the muscle if you aren't using them, so you want everything in you to have full ROM and be strong. Too much, for example, core training is going to mess up your back. Back injuries are super common in gymnastics, so you want balance everywhere. The first motion I worked on was back bend. The back bend is sort of arcing down into a bridge-like motion. You're going to open up your feet a little wider than your hips with your kneecaps lifted so your thighs and quads are engaged. Open up your chest and squeeze your shoulder blades, keeping your arms straight. Keep your back body and body muscles tight and engaged and have your arms up next to your ears so your ears are kind of covered. Push your hips up and forward while squeezing your glutes. You can see an example here of her arcing down into that. There she goes and she extends her leg in a specific movement that some people do at the end, which is sort of a modified bridge. You're going to lead with your head back first and keep reaching backwards. This is sort of a different angle so you can see that her ears are covered. I went over a lot of these on this proper form page. You can pause if you want to see it further, but just know some of the details like I discussed earlier. And you want to have your hips going down and forward, and you want to keep your knees at about a 130 degree in comparison to your hips and feet. When releasing the movement, you want to go from your bridge, tuck your chin to your chest, slowly lower down with your head first, then shoulders, and finally hips. Some tips for this that are very important to keep in mind. Don't put your whole movement on your back. Keep your hips forward. Compensate your movements. Keep your hips over your feet. Protect your head, especially by not letting your arms bend. And try to use your hip flexors and open your shoulders and hips. I would say it's especially important to not put your whole movement on your back. Like I said, super common injury. Keeping your hips forward helps with this. That's basically means that's what compensating means. By doing that, you're using a lot more of your muscle groups. You want to use your hip flexors, which adds into that. So that way you're using those thighs when you descend. So it's slow and protected. You can protect your head by keeping your arms straight and not letting them bend at the end, which is going to make you fall. Some improvement tips are, like I said, more of that strengthening. You want to keep your arms and shoulders especially strong for this one, so in the end, they're flexible enough to hold you up and strong enough. You can do this by stretching often as well to help engage those, which will keep you flexible. You want to do all your movements very slowly at first and practice the individual steps with a spotter, so that way you're ready to do the whole quality movement when you're beginning to compete. When you begin with bridging, this can help you be more flexible. You want to have your head next to a wall, and then you can push your chest forward is a good way to increase flexibility. To prepare for a backbend, you want to be able to hold your proper bridge for over a minute so that way you're ready for the ending motion in a backbend. If you're not ready for that, you're not ready for a backbend. Common mistakes people make, like I said earlier, not compensating, which is not letting your hips go forward and starting out too wide. It's very easy to fall in a backbend or just have a different mo- motion so like you land on your head. With your shoulders not being flexible and following you, that's going to be a problem. And if you have your arms too far out and putting everything on your back, like I said, very easy to fall or just injure yourself. Um, Here we have that angle I talked about earlier. This is a nice good bridge where she's not too far out or too far in. This is exactly where you want to be. This video here is a nice example of the whole motion. There she goes down, her arms are next to her head. She lands in that bridge motion over there. And she is not bending here. Her hips are forward. And she's going down into that lowering motion. Let's watch that 
arcing motion one more time. There she goes, down into it. Her hands are next, hips forward, using all those muscles, not just the back. There she goes. And that's a perfect example. That's what you want to follow. Some bad form examples. These are stuff not to do, but they're very common mistakes. On the left, she's going to not push her hips forward. She's, her knees are going to be brought down, and she's going to lift her heel. You can see that on the top. That's why she has a spotter, to keep her safe during that. As you can see, she goes down, but her hips are not forward. They're not really coming up like over here, and her knees are not at the right angle anymore. Her heels are up, and she's going to basically fall here at the end because she just can't keep herself up because she's in the wrong form. There she goes. She's flailing. On the right here, we have her not staying open with her shoulders. As you can see, as she's curving backwards, her arms are not following to the same level. That means at the very end there, her arms are going to bend. They're going to be too far out, and she's not going to be able to land in the proper position. As you can see, they're bent here, but not here. The bending here is going to mean she's going to land in the wrong position, and it's just a bad move to make, and you're just not going to be landing in the right position. I mean, you are going to predispose yourself to injury, but that's not even just the problem. You're just not doing the movement. Split jump is the next movement I said we're going to be following in two. Like I said, here's Abby at about 140, which is above the level she's training, which will be about 120. So she's right there. There's a good leap. Here's a side angle for everyone who wants to see it. And good. She's not compensating her arms. The arms are used mainly for momentum. So it sort of depends on how, where you want them. Some people end right at the bottom at the, like how you began with their movement. Some people end with them right at their sides. So this one, you're going to go from a leap. Uh, you're going to start at a plie, actually, which is sort of a small squat at about 45 degrees, into a leap, and then you're going to go into your splits. During that, you're going to use your arms for momentum, not your legs, but your legs are going to be strong enough to get you into that movement. Do not compensate with one leg. Do not have one leg leading. Do not have one leg behind. You want them to both be even. This is very important so you don't injure yourself, so one leg is not stronger, and just so you can do the movement. And then you're going to want to swing back down with your arms and land in that plie position. Some tips here, once again, strengthening, strengthening, strengthening. You want to be working on your legs in this especially, which you can do with some exercise bands and kicks in every direction. And you want to be flexible enough with active flex. That means not just muscles, not just flexibility, both. So you're going to be doing that with some other exercises like I do there and your straight body pike is helpful as well for some younger athletes this will help them get that motion in their mind and be flexible common mistakes you bend your knee midair this can be caused especially when you kick your heel out or use your hip your heel to drive it because this will ruin your technique because it causes your knee to bend so it's kind of all a domino effect however a lot of kids do that because they want their splits to be nice and big which driving with your heel can do but it's not going to be the right movement and you're more predisposed to fall and you want your hips to be squared. You do not want them out like this, facing you, me right now. And you don't. You want them forward, nice and forward and squared. Like I said, there's that good angle at about 140. That's not 180, but it's just you need more strength to be able to do that and flexibility. So that's why you want to, if you want to reach that level, work on both of those. Here we have her going up from the plie. That's what she was in before. Her arms are swinging forward for momentum. And she goes, see right now, even her legs as she goes downward are compensating. But right there compensation she's both legs are pretty equal and even as you can see here as well and her arms are swinging down for momentum now and she lands in the plie perfect here are some bad form examples these are ones you do not want to do they're common though so let's say for example here on the right her hips are unsquared and she's going to be facing us instead of forward as she should be And there. So she's going to go, see, her hips are not squared, they're facing us, and she's going to basically fall because of that. She lands, but it's just messing up her movement. She's not going to land as solidly as she's like to. Here in the middle, the main problem here is that her back knee is bent because she kicks out her heel right there, and it's bent. And she's not going to be compensated, so she doesn't engage her glutes because of that, and she's all wobbly. Over here, there's a little comparison, just so you guys can see that. She's going to bring her, she brought her hips out, and she squat, bend, and she's not tight. The, she did not start in the plie. That's to show how the beginning can affect it. See, she's starting more with that instead of here, which is where she should be. Just for fun here, I included a professional athlete who, um, on the right, did not compensate. So she did not complete the movement to the level she's supposed to be at. So you can see that. Um, thank you for watching. Um... The coaches said I helped them visually and verbally prepare this rather than just physically showing it. They also liked some medical turns I taught them. But overall, I hope you liked my performance.